This week's webcast is all about flipping direct instruction. And one of the tools that I'd like to focus on in this webcast is Google Forms. Again, this is Carla Kuiper. If you have any questions about today's webcast, be sure to email me at kkuiper11 at ebrschools.org. And I want to let you know that I am a Google for Education certified trainer. And I'm also really proud today to be repre representing the Flipped Learning Global Initiative as well. This webcast is going to be worth one CLU, so I need you to sign in with your name. If you include your email address, that helps me out a lot, um, especially if, when you make requests for materials or if you have questions later on or if there's any question about um, your CLUs in the district system, then it helps me out a lot to find you and make sure that you receive CLUs for today's webcast. This webcast is being recorded and these slides are going to be shared with everyone. I do want you to use the chat tools as freely, ask any questions that you may have. Um, if you would mute your microphone, if you have one connected, that helps out a lot, especially if where you're located right now, it tends to get a little bit noisy. I'm going to mute my microphone when the announcements come on here at Lehigh School. So you'll hear a pause in the audio for just a couple of minutes coming up pretty soon. I want to welcome everyone to today's webcast, and I'm going to type that into the chat box. And I also want to make sure that I mention that if you experience any audio difficulties, that you can join today's webcast from your phone. And the information is on the screen right now, so if you wanted to take a screenshot, it's also in the chat box as well. So if you get run into any problems with audio. Today's resources are located at the tiny URL on the screen. It's also in the chat box. I'm going to hyperlink today's resources into the chat box once again. So the purpose of today's session is to describe and discuss some of the benefits of a flipped classroom, to identify tools and resources for a flipped class, and to give you the opportunity to start creating your own flipped classroom activities based on Google Forms or other tools if you would like to start um, off by using some other tools. I'll talk about some of those. But first things first, what's a flipped classroom? Well, I want to let you know right away that the flip, idea of the flipped classroom is not something new. It was actually created or invented by John Bergman and Aaron Sams.
All right, so I want to just mention that flipped learning is not new. All right, okay. So now that the announcements are done, I just want to mention two things. One is that there is a wonderful book about flipped learning. Um, you can get the flipped learning book um, by going to the link that I have posted on the slide, and it'll take you to some information where you can read more about flipped learning from its inventors, Jonathan Bergman and Aaron Sams. I also want to mention that there's a link on the slide that'll take you to the flipped learning global website, and you can learn a variety of things here, including how to become Flip Learning certified. So what is the flipped classroom? I can honestly say that I initially heard that flipped learning had to do with students watching videos at home for homework and then doing their homework assignments in class, and I have to admit it didn't make that much of an impression on me. But since then, I've learned a lot more about flipped learning, and I've come to learn that in short, a flipped classroom means that the teacher either partially or completely reverses the typical lesson structure. Typically, we see um, a lot of teachers that will begin with a bell ringer, a warm-up, some kind of teacher lecture, modeling a discussion, and then independent practice and homework. And so in the flipped classroom, the teacher takes that problem process and they tend to reverse that. And there's a variety of different ways that you can do that. And some involve video and there are teachers out there flipping their classroom without videos as well. In the flipped classroom, the technology used is typically a video. Best example of this is Khan Academy. Um, Khan Academy provides kids with a variety of topics. So I won't go any further in, in terms of showing you Khan Academy. His videos are on his website, khanacademy.org, and they're also on YouTube. And so that's one of the most famous examples of, of a resource that's out there for a flipped classroom. And we have many teachers in the district who are already flipping instruction using tools such as Khan Academy. In a flipped classroom, teachers often record their own direct instruction. So if you choose not to use a tool like Khan Academy, that works just fine. There are teachers that I've seen in EBR who record their own lectures or their own um, I do and you do activities in the classroom or their own I do, we do activities in the classroom, I should say. And then you can also find other videos that are out there that are very similar to Khan Academy and I'll talk about some of those. In a flipped classroom, um, the warm-up activities tend to take the same amount of time 
but you'll notice that the guided and independent practice portion of the class tends to expand um, greatly. So in a 90-minute block, guided and independent practice is supposed to take up the majority of the time rather than um, review and lecture. So you can look at the difference between the traditional class and the flipped classroom. Um, review of content sometimes takes the form of going over the homework from the night before or maybe the lesson from the day before or the week before or even the unit before followed by a lecture into some new content which tends to take up most of the time. And so you can see the main difference between the flipped class and the traditional class has to do with what a teacher chooses to do with that lecture and review time. In a study published in 2014, um, Dr. Robert Marzano analyzed 2 million data points from observations of classroom teaching strategies. And 2 million data points is a lot. What he found was that teachers across the board, it didn't depend on the grade level, um, the type of school was not important, but that teachers were focused on four main strategies. Identifying information, practicing skills, chunking content into digestible bites, meaning that they were teaching a part of some content to clarify for students, or they were reviewing content. Um, the problem with this finding is that there was very little time spent on some of the higher order thinking, um, inquiry, induction, and some of the activities that students really need to prepare them well for today's assessments. The strategies that you see on the screen are great and they prepared our students really well for the assessments um, prior to Common Core and PARC, Smarter Balanced, and so on. So the benefits of a flipped class, pushing some of the lecture and direct instruction out of the class main whole class time is that you would effect expand the time for inquiry, things like interactive exercises, projects, more extended student-led discussion. Um, for example, in the math classroom, the majority of the time would be spent on problem solving or project-based learning. Okay, so who benefits when you make videos of direct instruction available through technology? Whether you use YouTube or even if you just use your cell phone to record some part of your direct instruction, who can benefit from this? Well, students who miss school or who miss parts of your direct instruction because maybe they're pulled out for a special program. Students at home, um, students learning in the computer lab, parents at home working with their children can benefit from videos of the, of the direct instruction portion of the class. Community-based tutors, um, teachers who pull students out at the school to work with them in interventions, um, interventionists, classroom volunteers benefit from um, videos of direct instruction. So if at some point you decide to either begin to record some videos of direct instruction or you make some videos available that, that you don't create, you're helping everyone on the list that you see. And last but not least, substitute teachers. Um, if you make videos of direct instruction available, then a sub day does not have to turn into a lost day of instruction. So I'm going to pause at this point and find out if you have any questions about flipped learning. Keep in mind that flipped learning is not necessarily always about um, students watching videos at home. There are teachers that set up flipped learning videos and students watch them as a workstation as part of the regular classroom. All right, so any questions, go ahead and type those in the chat box. All 
All right, what you see on the screen at this point, you can still type any questions or thoughts that you might have about flipped learning into the chat box. As you see a poll on the screen, I'd like you to respond at the hyperlink that you see at the top or you can text to me and let me know if you have ever tried flipping a lesson with students. Right, there's a comment in the chat box that it is a great way to front load and, and I definitely agree with that. That's a wonderful point that, that you're bringing out that if you um, provide the videos for the students, whether you make some on your own or you find some videos maybe on TeacherTube or Khan Academy, you can kind of uh, provide students with that preview of the next lesson or then even the next set of lessons. Okay, so like I said, I'm going to leave it here for just a few moments and give you an opportunity to respond to today's poll. So if you open up the web and just go in, um, go to pollev.com forward slash Ms. Kuiper 921, or you can send me a text if you, got, if you have your phone available, and then let me know if you've ever tried flipping a lesson with students. All right, I see some responses coming in. All right, I'm going to go ahead and roll forward and then maybe at the end I will jump back to the poll and give everybody a chance to kind of go in. Just if you're using your mobile device, you can text to me or you can, um, you can respond online. Okay, so in this next portion, I want to talk a little bit about Google Slides and how you can use Google Slides. Let me see if I can roll this forward. Here we go. So Google Forms. Why use Google Forms? Because they're easy to begin flipping your class if you've never flipped before and you're thinking about recording some direct instruction in your classroom or you're thinking about finding some videos that will cover some standards and then building them into more than just um, an experience where students just passively consume the videos. Google Forms are built to capture data. They're easily accessed from Google Drive. You can access a variety of templates and the best part of all is that you can add images and videos. So if we come on over to Google Forms, I love the fact that um, when Google re-released Google Forms from the old Google Forms, they put a template gallery in here and you can um, create assessments, exit tickets, end of course surveys, and the like. You're going to see in the template gallery that there are some forms that the EdTech team has been building. And posting them on the, in the template gallery. So these are all um, available for you to download or I should say make a copy and then to make them your own. 
The nice part is that there are several created with your classroom in mind, such as the exit ticket, the blank quiz, the assessment, and the like. I'm going to hit the exit ticket as an example. Um, and it was, it's extremely easy to take an exit ticket and modify it, add a video, and um, add some questions. You can use the questions that are pre-made, or you can modify these questions so that a student will watch a video and then, or a video clip, and then answer questions that you would create for that video. So the nice part is that you don't have to start from scratch, but you can create your own custom questions. The trick to um, creating a flipped activity, whether it's a flipped end of class activity or beginning of class activity or flipped direct instruction activity is that come on over to the toolbar on the right side. You'll see where there's a place for you to add images and then there's a place to add videos. When you select Add Video, you get to the Select Video panel, and it will allow you to do a video search. The nice part about a video search is that you can go in and search by uh, grade level and content area. If you just choose a grade level, I selected seventh grade math as, as an example. And you can go in and you can begin to see already that there's a variety of content. Here's a video on algebraic expressions. Here's one on angles. Now, I didn't have to select math. I could have said seventh grade ELA. Elements of a short story. And more language arts reading strategies. So if you are willing to look around and search within YouTube, you will find videos um, that will align to your grade level and your content. And I'll show you some places where you can look for some additional content. Sometimes you'll find um, videos that are longer, others will be short. Notice that when I selected the video, I got a little preview right within the panel that I'm working in in Google Forms. And I can uh, quickly preview the content and make sure that it's going to align to the content that I'm teaching. In this example, I'm just going to say select. And as you can see, here's my untitled video. It adds it directly into the Google Form. I've got three dots on the left side of the video. I can align it change the video if necessary, remove it, and I can give the assignment um, a title. I can even type in some directions here for the students. Okay, and again, I didn't have to put this in the exit ticket template. I could have used one of the other templates that, um, that Google Forms makes available. So again, the, the beauty of this is that these are easily accessed from Google Drive. Um, these can be posted in your Google Classroom. And so if you're using Google Classroom, if you decide to use Google Forms, you add videos to Google Forms, or you can simply post the videos directly into Google Classroom. And there's a variety of different ways to go with this. The beauty of the, uh, of the Google Form ex exit ticket is that Google Forms, they're really designed to collect your data for you and summarize it for you. And so Google Forms makes it easy to get started with this. In today's presentation, you're going to find a hyperlinked handout that will give you some step-by-step -step directions. on how to add videos to forms. And if you have any questions at all, again, feel free to reach out and contact me. So I'm gonna, going to pause here for a minute and allow you to create a form and see if you have any questions about adding a video to a form.
All right, any questions on accessing Google Forms and adding videos in? If you have any questions, make sure you just type them in the chat box or feel free to contact me after today's webcast and I'll be happy to talk about any specifics that you might have or anything that you'd like to do specific in your classroom. I want to share a couple of examples. And they're hyperlinked into the presentation. Here's a, um, an ELA example. It's from kind of more kind of a, a middle school example, but the video is a recording that a teacher made in PowerPoint. Okay, I won't uh, continue with the video and you'll be able to go in. These um, examples are hyperlinked in and you can see that this is a very simple example of a uh, flipped video created by the teacher. It's actually just a PowerPoint presentation. Let me, uh, okay, this is a, a PowerPoint presentation. And let me make sure you can see that. And let's see, I was going to show you how to go into PowerPoint and add audio. Let me see if I stop my screen for a second, it may make it a lot easier. All right, so within PowerPoint, if you are um, creating presentations, one thing that it's really easy to do is to go to the Insert tab and just to add in um, things like media. And one of the things that you can add in, you can add in videos into PowerPoint, you can also add in audio. So one quick way to make presentations for students or to add audio to students um, for students is to use PowerPoint. Once the teacher got the recording done on their PowerPoint presentation, you can upload all of that to YouTube. And you may already have noticed that you have a, um, a YouTube channel. If you go to the left side and go to my channel, you're going to be able to see that you, there's a button on the right side of the screen that will allow you to upload your own video files. So you can make videos um, on your computer using PowerPoint. I'll show you a few other tools and then you can drag and drop files and upload them to YouTube. It's as easy as that. So accessing your YouTube channel and beginning to create content for your students if you would like to has gotten much, much easier in recent years. Here's another example. This is sixth grade math. The Google form is all about ratios. And the questions are from um, an Engage New York math lesson. So some practice problems from Engage New York along with, um, with a video as well.
if you're interested in creating your own videos, I've listed some tools that you can go ahead and use. There are probably a dozen or more tools that are popular. I've listed six of them. And I'll, give you, I'll pause and give you some time to interact with the tools that you see on the screen. One of my favorites is Screencast-O-Matic. Screencast-O-Matic is a free program that will record anything that's on your computer screen, including PowerPoint, Google Slides, or anything else that you're using to um, create a, a short lesson for students. Another tool that many teachers use is called EduCreations. You can log in with Google. And the nice part about EduCreations is that it gives you a whiteboard to work with. And you should see at the top right that there's a record button and it'll allow you to begin um, just very simple tools. Anything that you can write or anything that you would write on a whiteboard in the classroom can be written on the whiteboard on the screen and you can talk and record along as you and narrate as you um, provide direct instruction using a tool like this. The cool part about EduCreations is that once you record, and then hit save. You can add some details and then you get a hyperlink of your, of your video. So just think anything that you would write for the students on the whiteboard can be, can be presented. And so now you can give kids the hyperlink and they can access that anytime. So that's EduCreations, it's one of my favorites. Now if you want to get um, creative, you can try using Powtoons. If you really like animation, so if you want to take it to the next level, or you can also use Animoto for, for education. Animoto for education is free for teachers. So you can sign up for a free teacher account on, on Animoto. If you don't know if you're really creative yet, or you're just not sure if you can find the time right now to begin creating your own videos, that's perfectly okay. Many teachers that I've talked to begin flipping lessons in their classrooms by finding videos that are out there. And I've listed about eight or nine different places that I think you can go and look for videos that have already been created. One place I recommend is the YouTube Education Channel. There are um, a lot of different playlists. You can search the channel. And you can find educational content. Another place, of course, is Khan Academy, Tried and True. TeacherTube is another location for videos. There are many teachers on TeacherTube sharing videos. And TeacherTube is free. I have also um, visited teachers who like using the tool called Show Me. Show Me is a, a community of teachers creating educational videos and sharing them online.
And just bear with me, my computer's getting a little slow. And this is a student created video. So you can see, even students get into creating um, flipped videos and this. So if you really want to take it to the next level and you have students who are pretty creative and they like making videos, this could even turn into a project-based opportunity for students. And the website is called showme.com and the links are here in the PowerPoint presentation. I'm going to just click on a few more of these. TES Teach is another one that's really becoming big on the scene. There are entire digital lessons here. And um, so there's a lot more here than just videos. These are digital lessons that include uh, hyperlinks, images, and videos. The basic website is free. There is a premium version of TES Teach. I use the resources on this website that are all totally free. So TES Teach and you'll notice that I've got a few more hyperlinks here that you can explore. I don't want to neglect um, some of the other resources that are out there. If you decide that you use Google Forms and you've added videos and you've gotten kids used to the idea of adding, uh, watching a video and responding to a question, then you can take it to the next level using the tools like Edpuzzle. On Edpuzzle, you can find content. It's a community of teachers sharing. And you can also search the Edpuzzle library for content. The nice part about Edpuzzle is that it shares directly to Google Classroom as well. So when you decide to create a video or you decide to use a video, you can share it directly to your, to your Google Classroom. You can, you can also add it to a Google Form, but many teachers decide to just go ahead and add it directly to Google Classroom. Notice on the left-hand side of the Edpuzzle screen that there are several resources that it pulls from. One is YouTube, Khan Academy, National Geographic, so it's another place where you can gather videos, TED, and you see some additional video sites where you can find educational content if you're not ready to make your own videos or to allow students to turn on a camera and start making videos. In addition to that, I've got a guide to flipped learning put together by the technology integration learning leaders. And then an additional, more extensive guide to flipped learning resources put together by a gentleman named Dan Spencer. And this Google Doc is, you can find this Google Doc online. I thought I'd hyperlink it because sooner or later you'll come across it. It's such an extensive document. But this way you can get to it really quickly. The thing that I like about this resource is that it's got flipped um, videos, uh, examples of flipped classrooms and videos as well. On this particular resource, the one created by the Technology Integration Learning Leaders, if you're interested in learning more about things like Screencast-O-Matic, Screencastify, Jing by TechSmith, so some of the tools that you can use to create your own videos. And also some of the places where um, you can host videos or where you can place your videos, such as Google Classroom and Edmodo. Um, I don't want to neglect to mention a couple of the resources that are at the bottom of this handout, Discovery Education. Remember that Discovery Ed is a resource purchased by the district. It's providing you with access to thousands of videos as well.
And then um, Nearpod, one of my favorite tech tools, is also out there providing digital lessons as well that can be used in the flipped classroom to take direct instruction and place it in a format so that students can access it at home, in a workstation, or just in a different setting. If you want to learn more about Google for Education, G Suite, the webinar series is going to return this week, uh, next week. This week we return this week and then we will also return next week. And I've got a link for registration. So next week we'll be taking on digital literacy with Google Search. Digital, uh, Google Search and Searching and Research are all up and down the list of those digital literacy skills, those digital literacy indicators, those indicators of readiness uh, for our students for the next grade level, whether it's middle school, high school, or college and career. That's next Wednesday. I'll talk about uh, how to use Google Search in your classroom, how to bring Google Search into your classroom and begin to teach students those research strategies. And I also want to pause at this point and just make sure uh, that I answer any questions that you all have. If you'd like to learn more, make sure that you're checking out our self-paced technology integration courses that are posted in Canvas. And be sure to follow the EBR EdTech on our new website. EBR Educational Technology is now also on YouTube, so feel free to visit our YouTube channel and check out some of the playlists that are there. You might even get a preview of some of the courses that are coming up. You'll see the Webinar Wednesday playlist um, of videos of, of webinars that you may have missed. And I have a question coming in on, on the chat box. Can you print the information out? Yes. And if you have any questions about um, getting a printout of the handouts or today's slideshow, just please email me and I'll definitely send it to you in a PDF format if you prefer to have everything in, in a PDF so that you can print easily. If you like Twitter, join us on Twitter this evening at 7 p.m. The hashtag is EBR EdChat, Brandon Abair, and I will be on Twitter tonight, and we are going to be tweeting about the best practices for closing out the school year. So that's on Twitter, twitter.com, hashtag EBR EdChat. Um, around 7 o'clock, so between 7 and 8 o'clock, Brandon Abair and I will be on with an EdChat. We'd love to hear from you what you think about the best practices for closing out the school year. So thanks for attending today's webinar. I'll hang out for around, I'll hang out for a little while if anyone has any questions. Today's webinar is worth one CLU and you will receive confirmation from ERO. Thank you, Ms. Washington. I appreciate you being able to um, join in today. I'm glad you were able to make it. Thank you to everyone who joined in today. Ms. Washington, Ms. Colston, Dr. Birch, Ms. Dupas, thank you for joining in.